Hi, everyone. The data going over the network is often a target for malicious actors to intercept and sometimes modify before it reaches its intended recipient. I'll show you how to prevent the data leaks by using SSL pinning and take it one step further to protect your SSL pinning implementation from being tampered with. But first things first, let me explain to you what SSL pinning is and why mobile apps may need it. When mobile apps communicate with the server, they typically use SSL to protect the transmitted data against eavesdropping and tampering. If you navigate your browser to a secure website, you'll see this small lock icon. It shows that your connection is protected. You can see that a protected site has a certificate, which your browser recognizes as valid. A connection gets made only to websites that have one of these valid certificates. But how does your system know if it's a valid certificate? There's a concept of a chain of trust. The server certificate is trusted if it's signed by another certificate, which is also trusted, and that one with another and so on until you reach the root certificate. This root certificate has to be signed by a trusted certificate authority. Certificates of these trusted authorities will be in your operating system trust store. Now an attacker who tries to eavesdrop on this traffic does not have the private key for a certificate signed by a root trusted authority for the given domain, and therefore can't sign data with that certificate. This means your system normally prevents connection to the attacker's host, unless an attacker plants a certificate in your system trust store, or in very rare situations, a root certificate authority is compromised. Now, an attack can be done in many ways, which doesn't always require the attacker to have physical access to your phone. Here, you can see that I've added my man-in-the-middle proxy certificate to my phone trust store. Now I can eavesdrop on the network traffic from my laptop. Neat! SSL pinning is a way to narrow down the list of trusted certificates to prevent the attack scenarios I just mentioned. With SSL pinning, you'll store the certificate data of your trusted website or an immediate signing authority. You can store a certificate itself, a public key, or a hash for that certificate. As a result, you'll not just accept any certificate that's trusted by your trust store, but rather only a single one, or a limited subset of those certificates. There are some popular libraries out there that you can use for SSL pinning. In this video, we'll use TrustKit SSL Pinning Library. It's open source and available on GitHub. It also comes with a demo application, which we will play with to test SSL pinning and how it can be worked around. Let's download this demo app and run it on our test device. Now this demo app has two buttons, test invalid pinning and test valid pinning. Test invalid pinning shows you what will happen if your pin certificate does not match the server certificate. Let's click this button and observe that the app fails. As we expected, the app reports an error because the pin certificate does not match the actual certificate. Test valid pinning, on the other hand, should succeed. It has a certificate pinned that matches the real certificate you can find on the server. So let's test this button. Ouch, this one also failed. And this has to do with an attack that I'm performing right now. What I'm doing is I'm trying to eavesdrop on the server connection through a proxy. Let's now try disabling the proxy and see if anything changes. Now as expected, test valid pinning succeeds, but test invalid pinning still fails. In general, to defeat SSL pinning, an attacker can use two approaches. First, locate and replace the pin certificate data. As long as the attacker finds and replaces these public key hashes, they can substitute them in for their man-in-the-middle server certificate hashes. Second, find and disable the checking routine. This is a function that TrustKit uses to evaluate if the server certificate matches the pinned one. As you can see, it returns one of these predefined values. It should either allow connection, should block it, or can't decide because there's no pinning data for that domain. Now an attacker can patch out the function to always return should allow connection. This renders the whole pinning process entirely useless. Let's start with the first approach. Using Ghidra, we can load the binary and look for a sensitive string. We're going to use the raw binary load, since that's the one that will allow us to export the patched version of the binary and repackage it. An attacker can locate the pin string in the app code like this.
Now this string has to be replaced with your proxy certificate pin. Let's start the proxy server and generate the pin. First, we'll grab the public SSL certificate. And then we'll use this utility from Trustkit to generate a pin from the certificate. Putting this in the code will make the pin checker trust our proxy in the middle. We won't talk today about how an attacker can locate the pin in the code. However, once located, an attacker can change the pin like this, placing the new one in the binary. Once this new pin is replaced, an attacker will export the new binary and repackage the application afterwards. Even though I've re-enabled the proxy, if you click the button now, it results in a valid pinning check. A completely different approach is to locate the check using a dynamic binary instrumentation tool. Now, Trustkit is open source, so we can easily locate the method where the verification is taking place. If we don't have the source code, a good look at the library API would reveal where the actual validation work is done. In Trustkit, the evaluate trust method can return one of three values, of which we are interested in the first one, evaluation success. To bypass the check, an attacker can hook evaluate trust method and always return evaluation success value. We are going to use Frida as our hooking solution. Let's connect to the running app now. First, we find the function to hook, and then we substitute the return value. Let's try and use both buttons, and we will see that all of them now report a successful connection. In the Frida console, we can see that our script was able to successfully replace the return values to the value that we need. When we switch to our man in the middle proxy, we can observe the successfully intercepted traffic. Name Obfuscation Using an obfuscation software, you can make it more difficult for an attacker to locate the function to intercept. Since the names are changed, an attacker will have difficulty hooking the methods in the code of the application or libraries included with the application. However, it is important to note, name obfuscation will not prevent attacks targeted at system frameworks. Hook Detection before we verify the SSL pin, we can verify the integrity of the key functions in memory. Method hooking, which we have just used to disable the pin check, alters the function in memory. Very often, the trampoline code to invoke the hook is located at the beginning of a function. If we know the function implementation, we are able to compare the first few bytes of the function in memory with the expected data. If the first instructions of the function do not match, it means the function has been hooked and further execution needs to be terminated. String encryption. To prevent the attacker from finding and replacing the pin string, you can actually encrypt the string values and or check string integrity within the code. This will require the attacker to find a way to encrypt the new pin and in addition, find and disable the integrity check. Further implementation hardening may include obfuscating application control flow and more runtime checks. This, along with everything else that we've talked about today, could prevent other reverse engineering and application tampering methods. When all of these protection layers are applied, it's much more difficult to recognize the exact SSL pinning implementation and bypass the pinning logic. Thank you all for coming. Have a wonderful day.